Hey friends, welcome back for another virtual visit. As you can see, we're here with our friend Julie. You might remember her from our jellies video. And if this room is looking a little familiar to you, there's a good reason for that too. If you remember, Chris and Nick were in this space talking about the function of this room. Um, again, we're upstairs behind the scenes on the fifth floor, so this is not necessarily something you'd get to see on your visit to the aquarium. And today, Julie's gonna show us something really cool that happens in this room. But before we get into what you're gonna do, Julie, can you remind us what the very important function of this room is? Yes, sure. So this is the live foods room. So this is the room where um, we culture or grow um, different food sources for the animals in the aquarium. So in here we have algae, which is what I'm going to show you today. We have brine shrimp, we have copepods, and we also keep um, mysis and grass shrimp in here as well. Awesome. And you kind of gave it away already, but you are going to show us what exactly today, Julie. So I'm going to show you how we grow algae, which is one of the food sources for um, different types of animals that we have here, such as filter feeders like clams and mussels, um, and also for really small um, planktonic crustaceans, which just means they're teeny tiny little animals that swim around in the water column in the ocean like copepods. Awesome. Well, I think without further ado, Julie, we'll let you do your thing. Okay, so just to give you a little idea of what's going on here, you can see that we have some of these carboys or jugs of algae growing, but there's one that looks like it's just blank water. So what I have here is seawater um, that I've put a little bit of bleach into to sterilize it. And the first thing that I'm going to do is neutralize that seawater so it will be um, completely sterile environment for growing algae. And we need to have it be a sterile environment because any type of contamination like bacteria, for example, can cause one of these cultures to crash. So first thing I'm gonna do is sanitize my hands before I touch anything with some isopropyl alcohol that we have here in these bottles. So just gonna spray it on my hands. And we use a chemical called um, sodium thiosulfate, which is just the type of um, neutralizer that we use for bleach. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop off the top, put a little bit of thio, sodium thiosulfate, spray everything down with some more alcohol, and put the top back on. Now I have to give this a couple of minutes um, to neutralize that bleach in there. So. Um, I can sort of walk you through how this carboy of seawater even got on the shelf in the first place. So when we have an empty jug like this one here, we clean it out, uh, we fill it with water and bleach, and we bleach it for 24 hours. Um, when that's done, again, we'll neutralize the bleach, dump it out, we give it a little rinse with an acid wash, which helps to get rid of any residue that might be stuck inside here. And that's when we'll refill it with seawater and give it another little dose of bleach in there to sterilize it. So we try to make sure everything is quite clean for Julie, when we do this. Can you maybe tell us why it's so important to have everything super sterile? Because it's obvious that it is a huge piece of this process. So if there is any contamination in these algae cultures, um, it could cause the whole thing to crash and those algae cells will die. And so it's, um, no longer useful as, as feeder or food for the animals here. Um, so even though this looks like it's just colored water, there are tiny microscopic cells or algae cells that are actually swimming around. They're alive and they're swimming around in there. And um, teeny tiny animals like larval fish or copepods can see those cells and they eat them. So if we get bacteria in there that can outcompete these cells, it'll take up all those nutrients that the cells need to grow and then they will die. So we assume that everything is a contaminant. My hands, <laughs> the air, everything. So we just try to keep it as sterile as possible. Very cool. Yeah. Super important, keeping it clean. Definitely. So the first, or the second thing I'm gonna do now that I've given it a little bit of time is I'm going to take out some of the seawater and test it to make sure that it's completely neutralized. So we have a whole system of airlines and clips and everything here. So I have to make sure the air that's coming in and bubbling up this water is closed off. I'm going to open up this line because this is where the water is going to come out. And then I have this other line here 
that I can turn on, and this is going to push air into this carboy, out of this tube, and into my pitcher here. How cool is that? And these are chlorine test strips. So I'm going to take one of these and just swirl it around and make sure that there's no bleach left in this water. I don't know if you can see this, but if I hold it up next to this chart here, it looks like there's zero chlorine in that water, which is great. Now I can inoculate. So once I fill this up, I'm going to take two liters of the seawater out because I'm going to put two liters of algae from another carboy into this to get it started. All right, two liters. So I will stop that flow of water coming out of the carboy. I'm going to need this in a minute, so I'm just going to put this over here. And we can get rid of this. So in order for algae to be able to grow in this very closed environment versus out in the ocean where there's lots of light and nutrients, we need a few things. So this air line that's coming through the top and bubbling all of this water in here is just ambient air, but it's also um, has some carbon dioxide in it, which is really good for algae to grow. So it gives algae uh, energy. Light and carbon dioxide are two very important things for algae. Um, the other thing that algae needs to grow are nutrients, which they would also get from seawater. So since I've completely neutralized everything in here, I want to make sure that I'm giving them enough nutrients and energy to continue to grow and become more dense. So for example, this culture here is a little bit lighter than this culture. So they so it's either a newer culture or it just doesn't have as much nutrients as this one. So in these bottles here are um, two types of media that have things like zinc, iron, potassium, vitamin B, and all kinds of good stuff for this algae to use. So I have two different things. They call it part A and part B. And so I'm going to use a pipette to put it into this carboy before I add any algae, just so that we have it all set up for the algae to grow. Now this is my favorite part because I get to play with fire a little bit so we can make sure that this pipette here is sterile. So if I spray this with algae, I'm um, sorry, with alcohol, not algae, that would be silly. And then I can take a lighter and make sure that it's nice and sterilized. <laughs> it's fun. Growing algae is fun. Science. Yes. So I'll take part A. I'm going to put five mils of part A into this carboy. So up to this, I don't know if you can see this, but up to this line is where we're going. Perfect. Now very carefully, try not to touch anything with my hands. I'm just going to put it right into there. Okay, that's part A. I'm going to do the exact same thing with part B. Spray this pipette with alcohol. Play with fire carefully. Don't try this at home. Excellent disclaimer. <laughs> So Julie, would you say that this is kind of the equivalent of humans taking vitamins, making sure that we're getting kind of all of the right balance of nutrients that we need to grow and thrive? I would. It's just like that. We want to give this algae the best chance. We want to make sure it has uh, plenty of nutrients and energy so that we can make sure it's healthy to feed our animals as well. 
Okay, now that I have part A and part B media in there, which again are just um, vitamins and minerals that we put in there for the algae, it's time to put actual algae in there to start growing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I have to uh, make sure I have all of these clamps and airlines in the proper order before I can put the algae in there. So I'm gonna make sure the air supply going in here is closed. I'm gonna make sure this line coming off of it is open because we're gonna put the algae from this carboy here into this one through these tubes. It just keeps it more sterile so there's less touching. So same thing over here, close the air supply. Open up that line. Okay, so we are ready. Now I'm gonna use this air line again. So I wanna send the algae this way, right? So I'm gonna push air into this carboy, which is gonna push the algae up and out into this carboy. There it goes. This is my second favorite part. As you can see it coming in here, it looks really cool. going to fill this carboy up to this line here, which is where it started. So we took two liters of water out, so we're going to put two liters of algae into it. Julie, while we're waiting for our algae to fill into our new bottle, can you maybe explain why it's important for us to grow our algae here at the aquarium? Sure. So it's important for us to grow it here because, number one, we can control the nutrients that we're putting into it. We can control the quality of it. Um, and we can just make sure that it's as healthy as it possibly can be for our animals. Um, it's also a cost saver versus us having to purchase it from a vendor. So if we grow it in-house, it's much uh, less pricey. Perfect. I always think this looks like a mad science experiment <laughs> in this room. Um, and I always just love coming up here and seeing all the different colors of algae growing for our animals and knowing that it's gonna end up in uh, some really high quality food for, for our animals here at the aquarium. So it looks like we've reached our line, so we're done. Pop the airline off here. Make sure that all this algae makes its way to that carboy. There we go, and now we have it bubbling again. So this air is important, like I said, um, because it's also adding uh, carbon dioxide into this culture. So we've got light carbon dioxide, lots of nutrients. And so this um, really light yellow kind of color should look like this nice dark brown color in maybe about a week. And then it will be ready for us to harvest. So I just have to put the date on here, which is the 15th. There we go. Ta-da. Awesome. Well, <laughs> Julie, thank you so much for sharing another really cool animal care task. I hope all of you at home thought this was as cool as I do because this is, this is science happening right here at the aquarium. How about that? So thanks again for sharing, Julie. If you guys have questions about anything you saw today about growing high quality food for our animals here at the aquarium, put those in the comments. We'd be happy to answer them for you. And we'll see you back here again soon for another virtual visit. Thanks, friends.